Well, today we're going to talk about Sandarkov, and we've got a lot of questions about how to use the features inherent to Sandarkov. Can you automate things? Can you make things a little bit more searchable? We're going to talk about two features today that are inherent to Sandarkov that almost nobody uses. And these are things that uh, people will pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for third-party tools to take advantage of. And I just wanted to present those to you guys so you can save a lot of time and especially not lose any opportunities you're working on. There's a way to get notifications, uh, make things a little bit faster. So let's get into it here. If I can share my screen. So everyone should be seeing sam.gov screen that I'm using right now. And in order for you to take advantage of these features, you're going to have to be logged in. So you don't have to be logged into sam.gov to search. Okay. And I've been through plenty of tutorials. You can find them on the YouTube channel. They're free. Just go to the tutorials block. But what I'm going to do now is show you something you have to be logged in for. So if you're following along, you are going to have to be logged in for this. I'm already logged in. You're going to do that right up here and it will take you through the government system that verifies who you are. But once you're logged in and you go to search, well, if you happen to be in an industry that just matches up perfectly with a product service code or NAICS code, then your searches could be relatively simple. But most people, whether you're in our certification course or you're just working out there, your company for another company, a lot of things don't fit perfectly into those buckets, right? A good example of that would be augmented reality or anything to do with a drone, but it doesn't have to be technology. I bring those up because like newer technologies typically don't have a service code or, or a NAICS code dedicated to that. So there's no drone NAICS code, for instance, right? Now that makes it a lot harder to search for things. So when I'm searching, I'm going to go to contract opportunities here. When I'm searching for something that is not perfectly matched up with a code, I'm probably going to have to do a few things. Now, I may be making a combination of NAICS and product service codes with keywords. Okay. And that happens a lot. So for instance, if I was going to go up here and say that I wanted a, and let's see if anything pops up, but if I wanted an analyst certificate, and that's what I was looking for. Now there's nothing that's just going to pop up there under NAICS code or product service code. But if I put that, those two terms together and I put exact phrase, it's only going to show opportunities that have those two words right together. And that's very important because if it just said any words, then any opportunity, anything within sam.gov that had either of those words in would pop up. And now I'm getting lost in the things that I don't care about. Right. Yeah. And are honestly, a waste of my time and yours. So now that we have the exact phrase in there, I'm also going to put in a couple of things. I'm never a big fan of looking at solicitations unless I've already worked that solicitation for months ahead of time. If you have a set aside, you can plug it in there. I'm going to look for a source of sought, right? And also I want to look at the dates because I don't want to anything that's expired, right? So let's just look at anything in the next three months. Oh, and of course I've got to type my, my little phrase in there again. All right. Okay. So we got one thing, right? Now. Let's say that I've worked on this because you guys are going to have to, if you have something to search for that is a little bit more complicated or nuanced, you'll probably have to do a bunch of searches until you start coming up with the right type of thing, uh, meaning the right responses. Like, so if this is, assuming this is perfect for me and it's something I'm going to, and I'm not going to go through the actual source of thought right now, but assuming this is something I really want to engage on and I've worked hard at this search, I don't want to have to come into sam.gov every time and refigure out what my search is going to look like. I want to make sure that my keywords are right. I want to know what works. And if I take a break from sam.gov, or I've been off for a week or more, I want to be able to come back in here and really hit the ground running. So one thing that I can do is you can see up here, it says saved searches. So you can save your search. So that's the first thing. It's actually, this is very valuable. So if I go in here and I hit save, I could call this, I'm going to call this cert two because I ran it earlier today. I'm going to hit save. So now 
I have this as a saved search. So whenever I come into sam.gov, I can go right to my saved searches and I can grab any of these. And now I have um, different searches that I've had in the past, augmented reality, or love, nothing, oh, here we go. So we've got a few things in here. So I can come right in, hit it up, and now I've got the opportunities immediately and I don't have to screw around with trying to figure out what the keyword combination is. And I don't have to remember this part again about putting an exact phrase in. So that in and of itself can save you a lot of time, especially if most of you guys, if you're, doesn't matter, sales executive, if you're on your own business, you don't have hours a day to spend in Sam.gov. I like to just make it one of those first things I do in my morning checklist. So I'm going to hit it real quick, hit the button, bam, I can see if there's three things in here. Okay. Now I might download them or I might just review them real quick to see if it's something I need to engage on. Now, what if there is something that I really want to engage on, right? So let's see this right here is due December 12th, right? Now let's say that this was something, this is the second thing I'm going to show you. When you have, it doesn't matter if it's a source of SOG or a right, request for proposal, request for quote. Often the government will put out multiple versions of these, right? And you want to make sure that if you're working, especially you have a deliverable coming up, you want to make sure you have the most current available information. So what you can do is now let's say I'm going to click on this. All right. So I already followed it. What you can do is you can follow this opportunity. Okay. And now you can automatically receive the updates and the notifications when something changes. So what, what could potentially change? Well, the government, first of all, just might've screwed up, right? So I've seen teams where they put out a solicitation and they forgot to put something in there. So then they have to put out a newer version. Often, and you've probably seen this, what you'll see is that the government will change the due date. That happens a lot around the holidays. They'll be like, hey, we want to make this due. And they weren't thinking and it was due. This just happened to, to me right before Thanksgiving. Thing was due two days before Thanksgiving. Well, that was stupid. The government certainly doesn't want to be reviewing proposals the day before Thanksgiving. So they're going to extend that past and you'll see that the week after. So that's just something that just happened to me. So it's top of mind, but these things happen all the time. Now you can actually manipulate when you get notified on these things, right? So I could go to my workspace right now. I'm not going to click on it. And then you can decide when you receive emails, uh, email notifications. It could tell you if, Hey, do I want to be notified weekly? Do I want to be notified daily? Or it can give you immediate notification. So you can receive an email immediately. I just said immediately like five times, but you can get that email as soon as something happens. Now that's usually how I set mine up. So I guess that would be my next uh, recommendation is you go into your workspace and in your workspace, you want to uh, just massage that. So you have all of your emails set up. So you're getting notified immediately whenever there's a change. After going through the course, I was able to land a client that pays me a monthly retainer to actually help them develop their business and go after these federal contracts. I was able to get a consulting gig with a uh, software company that currently works with the intelligence community. Within two months, I had my first client. So the initial contract was for a three month uh, contract for 4,000 a month. So 27 years old, you've never worked in government contracting. You've never worked as a consultant and you just uh, closed your first deal. Is that correct? That's fair. And I've got a couple small projects on the side as well. So definitely something, probably my best investment I've made uh, all year. A cold call landed a nine figure government contract. Start a consulting business and a high salary position as yeah. a account executive in public sales. So you're doing both of those things. I'm living the best of both worlds right now. So my name is uh, Mike Knickerbocker. I am a naval officer that's getting ready to retire. Right now I have three firm clients and two more perspectives. I'm able to provide value uh, across different industries because the skill set that I learned through the course, I was able to apply my own experience. GovClose came and it was a no brainer. I, I wanted some uh, secret sauce. This has allowed me to live in Germany. It's a little hazy today, but we can do that. You see? Oh yeah, dude, that's beautiful. The content, the training, it's invaluable. It's written. 
And Deb, what motivated you to join the GovClo certification program? Wow. Well, I think that wanting to work with a leader in the field, someone who understands government contracting on a deep basis and has the reputation, the experience working with you and your company with a natural. The students that graduate our program, they go on to start their own consulting firms, winning high dollar consulting clients. They go on to land high paying salaried positions as account executives with companies that sell to the government. I'm so proud of the people that have gone through our program. And if you are considering either a job or a business, and by the way, some of our students are doing both, as I did, they're running a consulting business and they'll have an account executive job. It's transforming their lives. It's bringing true wealth to them and their families. Back to the video.